Today, I want you to join me in a day in the life as I talk about the toughest listing I've ever had. So let's get into it. Now this story begins in the Greens Point market. Right now, much of the real estate in this market is half empty and the rental rates are just a fraction of comparable office and industrial commercial properties in Spring or the Woodlands. From a market perspective, the Greens Point market is unfairly painted with a broad brush. There are some excellent assets in that marketplace that I proudly and gladly take tenants to all of the time. Now, there are a few exceptions, however, to every market. And the Greens Point market has a few particularly bad and rough spots. This is one of them. Now, about a year ago, I got a call from some investors that had just purchased a property in one of these rough areas in Greens Point. Now, we talked about Greens Point and the surrounding markets. We talked about what deals I was working on. They wanted our help with leasing this newly bought industrial portfolio that they just acquired. Now, for the sake of this story, I'm gonna call the main investor, Joe. <laughs> now, Joe was a very smart and savvy investor that picked up this portfolio for cents on the dollar. There was huge potential for upside if we could turn things around. They needed someone with experience. They needed someone that knew how to lease and they needed someone that understood the market to lead that effort, and they thought that was us. To give you guys some context, our firm has taken properties like the one you've seen behind me and leased it up from 20 to 30% to above 80% in as little as six months. Now, it was clear that Joe got a deal on his property, and that made me wonder, where were the bodies buried on this deal? Now, there are very few fools in commercial real estate when it comes to deals of this size. Whenever you see a property that's undervalued, there are some significant issues present there and you better know what they are before signing on the dotted line. Now, it's impossible to know everything wrong with every deal, but you better know enough. Otherwise, you're gonna join a long list of failed investors and failed investments in markets like this. A lot of people don't understand that the primary cause of a failed commercial investment is not having the experience, the systems, or proper mindset when you begin. When you look at the Greens Point market or take any soft market like Greens Point, you're generally going to see a third of the properties literally empty. These will be the failed investments. Then you're going to see another third of these properties that are roughly half full. That is where this particular portfolio started and then you're going to see the last third of the properties over 80% full. These are the guys and gals that are balling out of control. These are the investors that are making some serious cash. Our systems are designed to launch properties into that top tier of occupancy in any market, particularly the softer markets, because they're the biggest test on your systems. You have to work harder to get those leases, but we've designed our processes to be most effective there. And in this particular case, I know one of the reasons that they were interested in using us is because we have a tremendous track record locally in this marketplace of just talking to tenants, understanding what they're looking for, and most importantly, understanding how to bring out the best in each property and to showcase that to the tenants that matter most. So now we know what Joe wants from us on this property, but we needed to make a decision if we wanted to take on this project. Now, when I started my career at Greb and Ellis, they taught us to never take on listings like this. It was universally accepted that undesirable properties simply take too much time and effort to turn around. When you're in the business of closing deals, you have to spend your time where the deals are. Now, my earliest experience in office and industrial had confirmed this thought process, that the traditional way of listing properties makes it nearly impossible to get leasing velocity up if you do things the old way. Now, the old way is putting a sign up, posting a listing on LoopNet and CoStar, and waiting for the phone to ring. Now, the phone ain't gonna ring <laughs> at a property like this. We knew this and decided that if we were gonna take on this project, we would have to do things much differently. 
So this portfolio was about half a million square feet of industrial space, pretty large. The rents were the lowest in the market. At the time, we were about 55 cents to 65 cents a foot, and the spaces were ranging from 1,000 square feet up to about 10,000 square feet. Now, the building was built pre-1979, so there wasn't much curb appeal, but it was off a major freeway, so it had great access. Now, starting out, the occupancy of this portfolio was less than half full, so we knew that we had our work cut out for us. But in our eyes, the higher the vacancy, the more deals we got to close in order to fill this baby up. So it wasn't a problem for us there. Here were the biggest challenges that we had with the property. Okay, the tenant mix was very bad. But guys like this that are loading and unloading, he's blocking the entire road. There were an extreme amount of delinquent tenants that just weren't paying rent, and there were a high amount of non-business tenants which kill portfolios like this. Finally, the lack of security invited a criminal element that thrives in situations like this, and that had to be dealt with ASAP. Now, before I tell you how we turn this property around, we have to cover the elephant in the room. The reason that most of you will run away from properties like this, and that's the criminal component. Serious criminal activity is a symptom of a much greater problem at a property. There are a lot of things that have to be neglected for a long time to allow serious criminal activity to thrive. In this case, you had poor lighting, illegitimate business leases, gang activity, you had very little control of access, ingress or egress to the property, you had weak security systems, no video surveillance, and a high amount of apathy with existing tenants. Now you really have to be careful when you deal with apathetic tenants that are stuck in this situation. When tenants are at a complex and they understand that an area is no longer safe and they choose to stay at that location, it's usually for one or two reasons. Either they are financially unable to leave, which means that they're really not the type of tenants that you want at your property, or worse, they are part of the problem. When you discover people that are conducting illegitimate business in your space, it takes a lot of tact and experience to be able to discover and root out those businesses in a diplomatic way. Because if you have to evict everyone, it just takes too long. If you're taking six months to get people out of your property, you're not getting money or rents from that inventory and it'll kill that portfolio. So as we continue with this story and we're getting to know the tenants better, we discovered there were shootings around the property. There was gang activity. So here are a few side effects that gangs have on your property. The first thing they do is they will intimidate your tenants. The second thing that they'll do is they become a big attractor for local law enforcement. You'll have gang task divisions or sometimes major operations. I've had listings in the past in the Southwest market where I've seen SWAT teams come and raid buildings close by and take care of tenants that were problematic that were doing drug related or worse. The last and most important reason that we have to be really careful when dealing with gangs is the gateway that this organization provides for all other sorts of crimes. One very quick way to determine whether or not your property is problematic is look at the activity during the daytime and look at the property activity at night. If your nighttime activity and your parking lot is busier at night than it is during business hours, you have a problem. <laughs> and if you ignore what goes on at your property and you have criminal elements operating with impunity, things will escalate out of control. It'll happen faster than you think. You have to address these things when you find out. And it doesn't mean that you go and handle it. I'm never suggesting that. I never did that. We always reported what was appropriate to the appropriate authorities. I think we should do our job by sharing information that they need to do their job. So what do you think about the story so far? As we learned more from this one project than I think we would have learned doing 20 of a class A or class B type deal, simply because it was complex, it was extremely, extraordinarily difficult, and it tested all of our systems to the max. So part two, which I hope you join us for, we're gonna talk about how we turned this nightmare scenario into an investor's dream. So I want you to stay tuned for next week and please subscribe so you won't miss the notification when this video is posted. We're gonna go into the same type of detail of the steps we took to address concerns, to transform this property, to get leasing velocity up, and hopefully you can learn a thing or two and copy some of these processes for your own success. So if you have any questions or want even more details, leave a comment or touch base with us. We'd love to talk shop. So thank you so much for watching. Again, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Looking forward to talking to you next week. Take care, guys.